Log in to our web dashboard using the same email and password used when you created your account. You can access our web dashboard via this link or via useboomerang.com and the web dashboard badge at the top right hand corner. Once logged in, you'll notice your family devices are listed on the left hand side. They are ordered by child devices first and any parent devices second. For this demo, we will be showing you both an Android device and an iOS device configuration. Our first device on the list is an Android smartphone. Here on the status tab, we provide you a little bit of information about the hardware, as well as two important fields I want to focus on. The first one is reported in. This is the time and date when that device last checked in into our servers. This is important as all information such as call logs, browsing history, app usage, and more are then sent to our servers at that time. If there's a big gap in time, it's maybe time to double check on your child's device to make sure it's still online. The version field tells you if Boomerang is up to date or not. Visit Google Play or the App Store to make sure you're running the latest and greatest versions that we have available. The Screen Time tab is where you set your daily time limits. These should already be pre-configured, but if you ever want to do changes, this is where you can do it. With our parent mode, you can also change all of these settings anytime from your own phone. Allocated time allows parents to set daily limits where apps such as social media and games count down the time. Once the time is all used up, only always allowed apps that parents chose will be available for use. Schedule screen time is great to set additional limits for bedtime enforcement or blocks of time during the day when the device shouldn't be used. Green blocks are allowed and those that are gray are not. So just click on the blocks of time to set the schedule to your liking. Adding apps and contacts to the always allowed list enables parents to choose good apps and contacts that their kids can call anytime. Apps listed here will work past time limits, but not the scheduled screen time. If you wish to have apps work past the scheduled limit, toggle the Anytime checkbox for any of the apps listed. Contacts can always be called as the phone app is never blocked. Manage apps via the Install Apps tab. Here parents can control apps that are installed by allowing or blocking them. Parents can also set a schedule on a per app basis where the apps are allowed or blocked. On the right hand side is an area that's ever evolving. The highlights here are our proactive blocking of all known web browsers. This makes sure that only our spin safe browser is used for browsing. The other very powerful feature is our new app approvals. With new app approvals, parents get notified every time their child installs a new app. And these apps are actually blocked on your child's device until you approve them. So, you get a chance to review the new app that it's installed, and you can either allow it or let it be blocked. You will need to install Boomerang on your parent device to experience this, as these requests are sent via our family messenger. Up to 30 days of app usage can be reviewed here on the Apps Usage tab. For the best experience, please install our app on your parent device and you can review all your child's reports from one central area. Spin Safe Browser History shows up under our web browsing tab. We do not collect other web browser history here, so this will only show you the Spin Safe Browser History. We will again show you up to 30 days of data, both for blocked websites and visited websites. You can also edit the content categories that we actually blocked, and you'll notice by default we block quite a few but all depending on your parenting style and your beliefs and your needs, you may want to add additional filtering or pull it back. And lastly, you can also add specific websites you wish to block. Boomerang is the only parental control app today that allows the collection of the YouTube app history. This includes both videos watched and the YouTube searches inside the YouTube app. A little tip, many parents do not know that there's a restricted mode inside the YouTube app and this will filter some of the inappropriate content that our kids can see by accident on YouTube. Once enabled, you can also block access to the YouTube settings. This will make sure that the restricted mode stays on and not turned off. The next two tabs, calls and text messages, only appear if it's a smartphone. On the calls tab, you can see the call log 
and on the right hand side you have a call policy and call options. Under the call policy, we will allow calls from your child's address book, so numbers that are stored there will be allowed automatically. If they are not, the calls will simply be blocked and sent to voicemail. An option parents wanted was to block the phone at bedtime or with screen time limits. You can enable this if you choose so, but by default we do not block the phone app at all. And lastly, under call options, you can block or allow specific phone numbers. On the text messages tab, parents can review their child's texting history. By default, we only collect contents if an unknown number or an inappropriate keyword was detected. Our keyword dictionary can be edited to any keywords you wish to be notified for. Parents interested in collecting all contents need to enable the collect text content. Parents can also get notified when specific phone numbers are text. Just input the numbers here on the bottom right hand corner. Your child's last shared device location can be reviewed and refreshed from the location tab. Recent check-ins show up to 30 days of location data shared with our servers. Parents can also set virtual boundaries via our geofencing feature. When your child's device crosses these boundaries, you receive a notification via our parent mode. This is currently only available for Android devices and will be enhanced for a unified experience across Android and iOS later this year. The Events tab shows a list of advanced device logs. We will sometimes use this list to help us support our users. On the Advanced tab, parents can enable additional security features. And for Samsung devices, we actually have another layer of features called Samsung Knox that enable parents to really lock down our app and the device against any tampering. Our next device is an iPad. For iOS devices such as iPods, iPads and iPhones, the features set in the tabs we're going to go through here are going to be the same. The first tab, just like our Android device, is the status tab. And here you get additional information about the hardware. Screen time schedules for iOS devices work similarly to our Android schedule screen time. Green blocks mean the device can be used and gray means it will be blocked. We require an active internet connection for any schedule changes. This is the biggest difference between an Android device and iOS device, as on iOS, we cannot actually monitor locally changes to the schedule. We will also refresh the install apps list so you get a quick view of what apps are installed on your child's iOS device. This information is also available in our parent mode under our reports. Web history of both blocked and browsed websites are shown under our web browsing tab. This is only possible if your child uses our Spin Safe browser. Just like the Android version, parents can also edit the content categories and add specific websites to block. The Location tab for iOS child devices will show you the last location shared with our servers. You can request a refresh from here and review up to 30 days of check-ins on the map. For iOS devices, your child will need to accept the notification they receive when a location check-in is requested. Unlike an Android device, we cannot refresh the location of an iOS device automatically. On the Events tab, we list miscellaneous device activities that can help troubleshoot common scenarios. This can be a good area to check for hints if your child's device is not behaving properly. If you ever need to make changes to age ratings and other settings such as blocking the app store or in-app purchases, this is done on the advanced tab. Parents can also make changes to these settings when they install Boomerang on their device in parent mode. From the Accounts tab, the Family Settings allows parents to change the email we send daily reports to and we can also send notifications to your smartphone via text message. So you can input a number here. The check-in frequency is set to 3 hours by default. This controls how often your child's Android device reports its information back to our servers. Examples are app usage, web browsing history, and logs for calls and text messages. 
This information is then accessed via our reports via parent mode or in our web dashboard. VIP phone numbers can be set as a global list of numbers that will never get blocked when dialed. Typically, family members' phone numbers are what's inputted here. In the licensing area, parents can purchase new licenses and renew their child's devices via PayPal. We also allow parents to purchase new licenses via Google Play, both from their child's device or from their own device in parent mode. Please note we currently do not support renewing via Google Play. Thanks for watching. This concludes our video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And of course, subscribe to our channel as we will continue to bring more content.